Hello everyone and welcome to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Finance. In this video we want to um, learn more about the applications of classification trees. Um, so we'll have a look at um, the use of regression trees, classification trees, tree models in general. And we will again use the credit card customer data set from our previous examples where we saw um, how it can be used um, to exemplify classification um, made by support vector machines and k-nearest neighbor models. So we are going to predict customer churn. It's a classification we want to um, forecast, we want to predict um, the termination of contracts by customers uh, for our credit card company. And um, to provide a more complete picture, we will also employ boosted decision trees. So these are special kind of random trees um, of random forests. We'll see how um, actually the initial models, the initial um, classification trees do not um, significantly improve on the performance of support vector machines and k nearest neighbor models, but later on we'll see that if we employ boosted decision trees, yes, we can achieve um, some increase in accuracy. And in the regression task later on, we will forecast health insurance premium. In this case, we have a metric response variable in contrast to the um, binary one um, in the previous customer churn example, where it's only about termination, no termination. And both data samples are available at Kaggle. And uh, actually, if you have a cursor, if you take the cursor here, you can actually see that we've linked, uh, included the link here uh, at Kaggle for um, both the customer churn data and the insurance premium. Okay, so we'll start uh, with the classification task. Again, a short reminder, if you haven't watched the other video, um, what the credit card customer data set is all about. It's um, a data sample, approximately 10,000 observations. And you, as the manager, you're responsible for um, looking out for the customers. And uh, you are worried that uh, an increasing number of customers quit your services, terminate the contract, um, and you want to slow down customer churn. So. G wants to proactively contact customers who are about to leave their credit card services to change their decision. So actually you're trying to actively influence the behavior of your customers based on uh, a prediction of whether he or she is likely to terminate uh, the contract. Therefore, the manager needs predictions on who is going to quit the services. So you want to classify um, those uh, observations. The data set includes more than 10,000 observations. You have features like age, salary, credit card limit, and other features. There's a D missing. And the data is unbalanced with only about 16% of the customers having churned. We've already talked about this class imbalance problem a little bit. This led to the fact that um, in the previous lecture where we use support vector machines and K nearest neighbor models, um, actually the accuracy wasn't um, it wasn't perfect because of the um, um, few observations we have where customers actually terminated the contract. So we start again uh, with importing the data and pre-processing the data. You can also skip to a slide 220 and the following ones um, where you can see it, we did the same uh, in our previous example. You can download the CSV file from this link. You need to import the CSV file Actually, again, a reminder that in many instances when using R, a CSV file is actually the best choice because it includes as few um, graphical um, additional information and layouting as possible. So it's the pure data. That's why CSV files are um, actually a nice input format uh, for many statistics programs. Um, we drop the last two columns according to the data set description, we don't need those two columns. And then bank churners, um, that's the object we create uh, from the object we've uh, imported. And this is in line eight here. Let me highlight this for you. Actually, we are dropping um, the last two columns. So we are only using columns one, two, the number of columns minus two. So for example, if the original 
object included 10 columns, we are now using only the first eight ones. Okay. We then, opposed to the uh, k-nearest neighbor in the SVM uh, example, we do not exclude categorical features. Uh, we can actually work with them here. So um, what we do is we create the training set and the test set. We randomly select 80% of the observations for the training set and the remaining 20% are included in the test set. And we include the client number, which is a number for identifying individual customers, it has no predictive value um, because it doesn't carry any economic um, information. And we use the DPLYR library. Again, we use the set seed command uh, for, um, in order to be able to replicate the results. Um, and then we set the training set and the test set. Okay, so what we do is um, we sample integers, um, we include our 80%, um, 20%, our and then we select based on the client number. That's what we do in line seven. Um, same with the test set. And then, of course, we need the same for the response variables. So Y train and Y test are again uh, the response values in the training and the test uh, sample. Now, decision trees do not require feature scaling because they are not sensitive to the variance in the data. That's why we do not need to scale our observations as we've done before in the previous lecture on the support vector machines. Now, we fit the classification tree. Um, again, as is common in many of our uh, machine learning algorithms, um, we need to select the hyperparameter, which is the parameter that governs the training, the learning process. So we again use the caret library and we do this in parallel. Um, we use cross validation, as you might know by now. Um, train control is uh, the function in caret um, to select the method for hyperparameter training. And what we do here is tenfold cross validation set seed in line four. If again, you encounter any problems with the parallelization, just comment these two, um, and actually, yeah, two lines out. And then tree model is we train based on X train with the response being Y train. The method is our part, uh, which is of course for partitioning. The tune length is 20 and the training trees is relatively fast. So we can actually consider more possible values. Um, and TR control is what we set uh, in line three. That's our um, option for using 10 fold cross validation to select the hyperparameter. And the metric that is used uh, for training is the accuracy. And then we stop the cluster in line 12. Um, what happens here if we print out uh, the tree model and the best tuning parameter, it is um, the complexity, which is given by an optimal parameter here of 0.00285 and so on. And as you can see from the um, plot here, um, with increasing uh, complexity, uh, you actually get um, fewer accuracy from cross validation. So this is what comes out if we plot tree model um, and this complexity parameter uh, CP is the minimum improvement required at each node to make a further split. So uh, remember that we are trying to train a tree here, meaning that at each level, at each uh, node, you need to decide whether you want to go one level deeper or if you say, okay, this is enough, uh, the tree is deep enough, um, we have enough accuracy. So this parameter balances possible reductions in the classification error via further splits against the complexity of the model, which is the number of splits or the depth of the tree. And a high value of the CP of the complexity parameter leads to more shallow trees, while a low value yields deeper trees that might overfit. And on the following slides, we'll exemplify this so that you can get an idea of um, what happens. Um, now, the R part plots R package provides uh, quite a convenient visualization of tree models. However, 
It requires a tree model that was fitted by our part directly and not in the carrot package. So therefore we again fit the same model using just a different package in R um, and uh, with the optimal parameters determined in the hyperparameter tuning step. Um, so we basically get the same model just with a different package, but in this package we are able um, to do some nice plots in R. So this is what we do. We visualize this best param tree model and then the tree model is initialized with R part. Again, we need our part dot plot as the package and then we can plot it. And the result uh, is shown on this slide. Now, um, if you have the slides, you can actually zoom in here, but I can do this here as well. I can show you this, yes. Uh, so we start out here, existing customer, and we have 100%, total trends CT, and we have total trends AMT, total transaction, total relationship count, and you can see those um, numerous uh, features we have, customer age, this is quite clear, customer age being large or equal than 37, total revolving balance, um, these are all the cutoffs, and in the end you get a tree that looks like this. So if you zoom in or do it at home um, with the same uh, code, um, you get this tree. As one can see, this is actually quite deep. Now we will now raise the complexity parameter to obtain a more shallow tree. So we multiply the complexity parameter from the current tree with 50 and do the same again. And what you get is on the next slide here. You can see total transaction CT, that's the total transaction count and the total revolving balance on the credit card. Again, these two are quite high up in the tree, but this is where the partitioning stops. That's the whole tree. So actually we have um, the customer, if this total transaction count is smaller than 55, yes or no, uh, we get a prediction here. We have an attrited customer, existing customer, existing customer. So this is the whole tree, quite shallow. And that's because we increase the complexity parameter. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the cutoff level. Now classification in each node is as I mentioned in the previous um, video, performed by a majority vote. However, it is possible and sometimes even useful to choose a cutoff level that is different from 50%. So it's not 50% and one, then it's class one, otherwise it's class zero. You can also vary this cutoff level and we can influence the sensitivity and the specificity by choosing a different cutoff level. And the accuracy closely follows specificity um, due to the class imbalance in the data. And this is shown um, on the training data in the deeper uh, tree in this plot. You can see in red the specificity, in blue the sensitivity, and black is the accuracy. You can see that if you take different cutoff probabilities, probably you shouldn't use zero or close to zero or close to one, but as you can see, um, it's not constant for all these different cutoff probabilities, but actually um, there might be a choice that increases the accuracy or the sensitivity um, of your model. Okay, so what's the predictive performance of this classification tree? Um, we rely on the model determined by a cross validation, which is the deeper tree. We don't use the shallow one with only two levels. Um, Again, we use predict and we print the confusion or error matrix based on the test data sample. And this is what we get. We get um, in the confusion matrix 252 and 1677 um, customers which have been um, classified correctly. The accuracy thus is 39, uh, 93%, sorry, uh, with this confidence interval and corresponding information on the no information rate, kappa, uh, sensitivity, and so on. So the predictive performance is actually comparable to the one um, of the support vector machine that uses a non-linear radial kernel. See also slide 248, but um, we can do even more. And this is what we do in the next video. We will use um, a random forest, we will use boosting, uh, and then also come back to the regression example uh, to improve the f um, prediction accuracy of this classification tree.